People start smoking for all kinds of reasons. Most of these are social. Peer pressure, for example, or just because your family smoked. Some start smoking because of stress, others for weight loss. Whatever the reason you start smoking is not really the reason that you continue. The reason most people continue to smoke is because they're tobacco dependent. Now, tobacco, of course, contains nicotine, which is, a, which is addictive. But there are other things in tobacco smoke as well which may add to that addiction. One of the key things about tobacco smoke is that it delivers nicotine to the brain, where it has its effect, fast. In fact, from taking a puff to getting the reward is only a few seconds. There is nothing as good as cigarette smoke in delivering nicotine. Even IV nicotine would not be as fast as smoked tobacco. Now the speed of action is really important. The faster you get the nicotine, the faster you get the reward. And this is probably why we don't see never smokers becoming addicted to things like nicotine chewing gum. Sure, you might know of some smokers who have quit using nicotine gum that use this gum long term. But you'd be hard pushed to find anyone that's never smoked that got addicted to the gum. And this is because it just doesn't deliver nicotine in the same way as cigarette smoke. So cigarette smoke is unique in that it delivers nicotine quickly to the part of the brain that rewards behavior. And if you think about smoking, every time you take a puff, you get a reward. 10 puffs on a cigarette, 20 cigarettes a day, 200 individual rewards. This is why smoking behavior becomes so entrenched and it can be difficult for many people to quit. Now, when people go without smoking, they report all kinds of things. But there are a number of symptoms that are a result of tobacco withdrawal. You might know some of these. Urges to smoke, hunger, irritability, depression, can't concentrate, can't sit still. These are all common. The most common two are urges to smoke and increased appetite or hunger. Now urges to smoke can go on for a very long time and they can be as strong a year later as they were at the very beginning but they become much less frequent and people get better at managing these urges to smoke. The increased appetite, well that lasts until the body weight stabilizes. You might know that the average amount of weight gained in the first year of quitting smoking is around seven kilograms. Now that may not sound like too much, but it is if you're already overweight or obese. And many people will be worried about this. The other symptoms, the low mood or depression, the irritability, the poor concentration, the sleep disturbance, are all relatively short-lived. These will typically disappear within the first four weeks. And so there is a light at the end of the tunnel for people. And I think when you're explaining or talking about these withdrawal symptoms, don't sit down there with your clients and go, right, you're going to get depressed, you're going to get irritable, you won't be able to concentrate and you won't be able to sit still. Do explain that there are some symptoms that people will experience when they quit smoking and give them some examples. But the key point is, that these do not last forever. The majority are going to disappear within the first four weeks, as long as you go without having a single puff. And that is important, going without a single puff. If you're having a cigarette, the odd smoke every now and then, then these withdrawal symptoms are going to continue. So when talking about tobacco withdrawal to your clients, I like to use an analogy of the little green monster on the shoulder. And it goes a little bit like this. Over many years of smoking, you've developed this little green monster on your shoulder. It's there and it cries out for cigarette smoke. It gets hungry, if you like. Feed me, feed me, feed me. And you need to have a cigarette just to shut that little monster up. Now, that monster crying in your air 
They're the tobacco withdrawal symptoms. They're unpleasant. You take a puff, they all go away. And this is why many smokers believe that smoking alleviates the stress. The little green monster crying on your shoulder is kind of stressful. Taking a puff shuts it up. But you know, within an hour or so, that little green monster is going to be hungry again. Crying, feed me, feed me, feed me. And you just have to have another cigarette just to shut the monster up. Now there is a way out. I'm afraid you can't kill the monster, but you can definitely put the monster to sleep. And the way you go about doing that is to starve it completely of cigarette smoke. Not a single puff. Because one puff, just one puff, is all it takes to wake that monster up. And that monster's gonna be awake, crying out, feed me, feed me, feed me. And before you know it, you're back to daily smoking. Now you'll see a video explaining this in another way. And it'll also give you some of the technical detail about the reward pathways. Again though, you don't need to go into great detail with your clients about the biochemistry of all of this. Just keep it simple. Remember, reassure them, tobacco withdrawal symptoms are common. They're likely to occur. The good news though, is that they're not going to last forever. And we've got some ways to make quitting much easier.